Hey everybody, Brandon here. For years, decades even, we've heard about the displacement of the pension plan in favor of the 401k plan. And there has been a running narrative uh, sounding caution for the average American and their ability to adequately capitalize retirement for themselves. Uh, there's been vast um, concern expressed over undersaved individuals and how this will lead to a lot of unpleasant things come retirement for a number of these people. On the other hand, there have been a group of people, in much smaller numbers, who have welcomed this change to the retirement landscape with open arms, claiming that this is a wonderful democratization of the retirement process as far as it concerns employer-sponsored plans. It allows people to more easily jump from job to job and carry the benefit of their retirement assets with them, which was fairly difficult to do when it came to the pension years because, generally speaking, in order to maximize the benefit of a pension, which was the end goal for a lot of people, you had to stay put even if you hated the job that you worked in. 401ks bring about a much different scenario where you do have the option to build value and carry that value with you from place to place um, as you decide you want to move up or move on to different uh, employment situations. And the interesting thing that has unfolded despite the decades of uh, suggestions that we were headed towards a train wreck is a very low number of retirees who seem to be struggling in retirement. The numbers have actually been quite mind-boggling in terms of how well off the average retiree is. So does this now mean that all the calls for going back to the pension plan and all of the fears that were expressed regarding the, the death of the pension were misput, uh, incorrect? I think there's some more data that we have to look at that might give us some insight on this topic that would suggest the train wreck is still coming. And despite the decades long period we've been through where pensions have absolutely fallen out of favor as far as the majority option is concerned among employers, we've yet to flush that system completely dry. So if we look at retirement assets in the United States, they break down broadly as far as employer retirement plans, employer-sponsored plans, into two broad categories. We have defined benefit plans, those are your pensions. We have defined contribution plans, those are your 401ks, your 403bs, your 457s, and all of those other style products where you are much more in control of the money you put into the plan. So 401ks and 401k-like assets have become the dominant plan choice, at least by the numbers. As we look at the number of retirement benefits or retirement plans in existence, absolutely the 401k-style plans have the numbers here. And total assets held in 401k and 401k-like plans in the United States stands at just over $9 trillion presently. That sounds like a lot of money, but if we look at the amount of assets housed in defined benefit plans, what we discover is it's just a hair over $17 trillion. So despite this 30 plus year period where pensions have absolutely fallen out of favor, it's still the case today that Americans have nearly double the amount of assets saved in pensions than they do in 401k style plans. Now, I find that stat mind-boggling because it's absolutely the case that pension plans have dwindled in numbers in terms of the number of employment opportunities that exist where you could be enrolled in a pension. And 401ks and, and, uh, and equivalent style products have exploded in terms of availability, and yet the assets housed inside pensions still overwhelmingly exceeds the assets that have been saved and accumulated despite all of the amazing market run-ups that we've experienced inside 401k and 401k style plans. In addition, if we start to look at this as a per capita benefit, the numbers get a good bit bleak. So unsurprisingly, the majority of pension assets are housed in public sector pension plans. So broadly speaking, in the United States, you can work for two possible sectors. We have the private sector and we have the public sector. Private sector pension assets of that 17 trillion comprise about three quarters of all the money. So three quarters of that $17 trillion I mentioned is sitting in public employment pension plans. 
the one quarter remainder, that's sitting in private pension plans. The problem, the problem that this presents is that 85% of all Americans are employed in the public in the private sector, not the public sector. So 15-ish percent are public sector employees, and that's where three quarters of that $17 trillion is currently sitting. And the inverse is also true on the, the 401k style plans. It's about 90% of those assets are held in private sector uh, plans. So the, the numbers in terms of assets that have been accumulated for the benefit of the employee, if we think about it as a per employee kind of case, is strong, extraordinarily strong for pensions and rather anemic for 401ks. But on top of all of this is the fact that when the baby boom generation first started to enter retirement, so the oldest of the baby boomers, started to become eligible to collect social security and enter retirement, a little more than 50% of them were covered under a pension plan. The numbers have unsurprisingly dwindled or, or shrunk over time. We're now at a point where a little over 25% of baby boomers entering retirement today are covered under a pension plan. But a lot of them have been, and a lot of them are collecting some sort of pension benefit. It's a lot harder to wrap our arms around the number of people who might be part of an old pension plan. Perhaps that pension plan never came to the fruition most people thought it was going to, but they still receive a monthly benefit maybe of a couple hundred bucks. And a couple hundred bucks every month of guaranteed income is something, and it's better than nothing in retirement. The big takeaway from all of this is the fact that, that pensions despite having fallen out of favor as employer-sponsored plans, still have a gargantuan amount of money in them benefiting Americans, both working, but for the majority, retired today. And they absolutely shadow the assets that have been accumulated inside defined contribution plans, which is moving forward, the mechanism through which a huge, huge percentage of Americans will try to finance their retirement. Now, some degree of good news is the fact that there is $11 trillion sitting in IRAs uh, across all employment sectors. And we don't exactly know how that breaks down across public and private employees, but there's a reasonable assumption that a lot of that probably is held by private sector employees versus public sector employees, since a lot of them tend to have lower defined contribution, just propensity, if you will. They don't tend to contribute much to defined contribution plans that they have available to them. And they're not necessarily by style big, big adopters of additional savings plans like IRAs because they know they have the pension benefit that will come to them one day. But even if we were to attribute all of that $11 trillion to the $9 trillion held in 401ks, minus roughly 10% from that $9 trillion number because there is some money housed in 401k or rather defined contribution style plans for public sector employees. We arrive at a number that's not that much larger than the money housed in pensions and we already know that a huge percentage of those employees are public sector employees and that's a much smaller number than the private sector. So again, the per capita dollar saved is not good among defined contribution plan enrollees. And so far, the test among baby boomers has been a test that has seen a lot of people who had some pension benefit in retirement, obviously receiving that guaranteed income. So the lack of retirement failure in the sense of running out of money or living a destitute life hasn't really become obvious to most of us because pensions are still probably propping a bunch of those people up. The big message here is simple. If you currently don't have any sort of pension plan that you can bank on headed into retirement, there's a really good chance you're at a bit of a disadvantage because a lot of the people who have retired before you are likely collecting a guaranteed income that you will not. So the most important thing that you can do today is start building a plan to create guaranteed income once you reach retirement because it's the one thing I would argue that's probably kept a lot of people out of serious hot water once they've reached retirement.